The first talk is by Steve Randall. Uh, it's titled, The Use of Core Imagery in Modeling Geometallurgical Properties. Sorry, I spat that out, and he's from Geosoft. Thank you, David. And uh, thank you to the, the uh, Conference Organization Committee for the chance to give this talk. Um, my talk's based on some work we're doing with a partner, which is uh, JK Tech out of Queensland, and specifically with John Jackson and some of his PhD students out of SMIJ and JMKRC. Um, the work started with a conversation we had with John where he wanted to look at analyzing some of his Geomet test results in a, using OASIS Montage and using the, the same principles as we apply to some of the geophysical data and trying to use the Geomet data in a similar fashion. And so we worked with John and we brought the data in and we did some interpretation analysis and we got some initial primary results. Um, but then John sort of started to expand the problem. So what I'm really going to just talk about is how we're working through that and the type of workflows we're trying to build out now. So um, we're very familiar, I think, with the, the problems on the left-hand side, that the challenge is somewhat around the analysis of core, the human observation of that core, the many people who are involved in that process, uh, that the mineral identification isn't very straightforward necessarily, and primarily that the, the process in itself is, is set up for building of geological models and not really thinking of the full life cycle of the mine and how that data might be used over the life cycle. And this is one of the areas that John was really challenged around, how he incorporated a lot of this human observation work with his, his sample data on the right-hand side, the physical tests that he was making on the GMAP projects. Um, now, their, their world isn't all roses either. Um, their biggest challenge is that they have very few samples, really. The cost of the samples and so forth mean that they're not gathering a whole amount of data. Um, they recognize their sample is somewhat subjective. They're obviously only working with intact core. And quite often, they represent, you know, it's not fully representing the ore body, either the variability of the ore body numerically or you know, the way it's going to be mined. So really, John brought forward this idea of how we would work on this to try and advance this. And a lot of the, the idea is, is how we take a lot of this human observation and somewhat systemize it and integrate it against the physical test work that he's doing within his group. And so John actually came forward with an opportunity to basically look at how we might leverage a lot of the new data that's coming out of the hyperspectral space and how we might use that as, to, as a predictive model for Geomet downhole. And then he was interested in what we could do to try and start modeling this in 3D and expand the, the use of this data. And overall, the idea of, you know, can we bring the GMET processes forward in the decision making, make those decisions quicker and earlier, and incorporate them into the exploration type of work? At the same time, you know, can we extend the data we're capturing in, in the exploration cycles and start to use it throughout the life cycle of the mine? Quite lofty goals. I wouldn't say that our project has actually started to achieve these yet, but we are starting down the process of trying to understand this. So this was the opportunity he brought forward. Um, there's been some great talks on hyperspectral, the use of hyperspectral in the, in the talk, so I won't, I won't dwell on this in my 10 minutes. Uh, what I will mention is obviously what we're, we're trying to leverage here is primarily the mineral maps and start to use that imagery that's coming out of that along with the uh, geostatistical representation of the minerals down in the identified, and then how we can try and use those within the, the uh, workflow we're working on. So this work is very much based on the PhD work that's going on in SMI in the Queensland University at the moment. And what we're looking to do is take the imagery maps that they're coming out of the core hyperspectral and apply a textual analysis and a classification type workflow to those and then we're looking to calibrate that with the physical test work to come up with a synthetic downhole representation of the geomet properties. Um, and that work is going on, and it's been going on for quite a few years now down there. And we're just starting to sort of pick it up and look at how we might look and commercialize it. What we're looking to do is primarily wrap it up into a bigger workflow where we take this core imagery data sets apply the textual analysis and the, the classification, apply different styles of predictive modeling, which is one of the challenges I'm going to quick, briefly talk about, and then generate these synthetic drill hole type data, and then bring that into a more classic workflow that you would have seen in the sort of GeoSoft space or in any other the spaces for geological interpretation and eventually into sort of spatially modeling the geomet data. 
So as I said, this work's been going on for quite a while. A lot of it's coming out of the, the work of the PhD students in Queensland. Um, you know, one of the first areas that they've really sort of started to prove out with this is the, the fact that the, the hyperspectral data is giving us a lot more detail than we were getting from the visual analysis of the core, as you can expect. And so we're getting a lot more models of the variability in the geomet from that, which is great. And then uh, we can then start to look at how we apply that in a more spatial setting. You do have to hold it up. Uh, the only other, the another area that's for, that is quite exciting. They've started looking at how they look, how predicted versus measured is occurring, and, and how the model results are coming together. This is an uh, this is an example from a copper porphyry, um, where you have predicted along the top and measured along the side, and really, you know, you can start to see there is quite good good results and correlations between the predicted and the the modelled, uh, but obviously there's still areas where the classification and textual analysis has to be tuned up to understand if we're actually truly capturing that, that uh, geomet property. And there's quite a lot of work there to be, to be looked at. So where we are right now is we're very much in the early stages of this project. Uh, I hope in 10 years I'll be here to say how we got, we got on with it. Um, you know, what we really see as an exciting opportunity is the ability to take these somewhat limited uh, geomet tests apply them against and, and model them with the um, hyperspectral data so that we get greater leverage of those, those geomet tests and that we can actually come up with a full leverage of the exploration data to come up with a full model of that. Um, I would say at this point as we're, as we're starting this project, we're already starting to see some of the challenges. Um, there isn't one method for all mineral settings, I would say, and so we're looking at different predictive modeling type of approaches to try and take that hyperspectral data and apply it and classify it. Um, my own background is mainly petroleum for many years. And uh, you know, I've worked a lot on reservoir characterization. And as we built greater, more detailed geological models, we always then had to deal with passing them to reservoir engineers who upscaled them completely <laughs> and decimated them. And I think that's going to be a large body of work here as we start to use the very detailed uh, hyperspectral data and actually how we then look to start to upscale into a bigger scales. So that's going to be a large body of work. And then the last area really is something that's been talked about a bit during the conference, and that's cultural change. Um, it's a theme that's come up a couple of times. How do we bring this decision making forward earlier into the process? But how also, how do we organize our teams, our geoscientists, our, our geometallurgists? which I kind of also say, <laughs> and bring them into a more incorporate, you know, integrated environment so that their work is, is done in a more integrated fashion, but also how do we break down those cultural silos which occur right now in a very serial process. Those, I think, are the things we're going to look at as we, as we look to try and sort of bring this offering forward. But at the moment, we're very excited by the work on the hyperspectral and how we can use it in the GMAT prediction. Uh, and with that, I'd just like to very much acknowledge this is a lot of work being done by JK Tech and SMI, J JKMRC, and the PhD students there. So I'm really here representing some of their, their initial work. Thank you. I think there's uh, time for questions for Steve. Didn't think there would be. <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You.